pigmentations of oral and paraoral region so what is pigment pigment is basically a coloring substance uh, we have melanin pigmentation okay melanin uh, or the melanocytes are basically responsible for producing the pigment melanin which if deposited in the oral cavity uh, leads to the characteristic uh, tan brown or black color basically uh, melanocytes are uh, situated anywhere in the oral cavity but uh, when they deposit uh, melanin or when the deposition of melanocytes occur melanocytes are basically present in the basal layer of uh, epidermis right so when the deposition of uh, melanin granules occur in the melanocytes they are just transferred to the adjacent uh, cells through keratinocytes the melanosomes uh, are transferred and that leads to deposition of melanin and uh, this deposition of melanin may be anywhere in the oral cavity on the soft tissues or even even the, sometimes the teeth even show deposits of uh, or the teeth even show uh, pigmentations or discolorations okay so we'll study the pigmentation of oral mucosa and the pigmentation or the discolorations uh, seen on the surfaces of teeth that is the stains on teeth Uh, as i told you the melanin pigmentation or pigmentations of oral cavity they may be because of uh, any physiologic reasons physiologic pigmentation or a uh, pathologic pigmentation or uh, uh, pigmentation occurring because of underlying any systemic disorder okay so we'll study all of them in detail first we'll see the pigmentation first we'll study the pigmentations of oral mucosa as i told you pigmentation of oral mucosa may be a endogenous pigmentation that is pigment uh, melanin is being deposited because of uh, uh, it's deposited because of deposition of melanocytes from inside the body there is no external source or causative factor responsible for deposition of melanocytes okay some stimuli is leading uh, is causing for the melanocytes to be deposited in the basal layer the increase in production of melanocytes is seen so that's nothing but endogenous pigmentation exogenous pigmentation is uh, increased deposition of melanocytes owing to some stimulative factor like the usage of any drugs like the usage of any foreign body or material which is acting as a stimulant for the deposition of melanocytes for the proliferation of melanocytes and we we'll see drug related pigmented lesion and um, hormonal reasons or underlying systemic disorders which are responsible for excessive melanin deposition and other lesions which uh, which we see where we see excessive deposition of uh, melanocytes okay other syndromes so first we'll see the endogenous pigmentation macule labial or an oral melanocytic macule is a, a form of endogenous pigmentation that is it is nothing but it uh, the macule is a focal deposition of mel melanin in the body occurring anywhere in the oral cavity usually the uh, macule or uh, oral macule is more commonly seen in the lip lower lip region or the upper lip region more commonly it shows melanin deposition not only that any side in the oral cavity either the buccal mucosa gingiva or palate uh, may show some focal collection of epidermal melanocytes leading to deposition of mel melanin okay this uh, melanocyte melanotic macule it shows a female predilection and uh, commonly seen in age group of 20 years okay young adults and uh, how is the lesion appearing the macular lesion macule is nothing but a flat pale tan lesion right so this uh, macule it is focal that is it's appearing to be of a restricted size that is it is well demarcated from the surrounding tissue and the color of the lesion is tan to dark brown and there are no symptoms associated with the occurrence of the macule and it is round shape and flat pale tan macule which will be of a circumscribed and restricted size okay it's focal and when you uh, study the histologic picture of macule uh, you see that there is normal stratified squamous epithelium with abundant melanin deposits are seen uh melanin mel melanocytes are basically present in the basal layers they start proliferating they start uh, showing deposition of melanin granules which are just transferred to the adjacent keratinocytes and thus uh melanin deposition becomes uh, excessive and it's just showing as a macule there is no specific treatment required for macule it is just a uh, uh, asymptomatic lesion right so macule is a form of endogenous pigmentation aphylus or freckle 
It is also a form of endogenous pigmentation. What happens is due to prolonged sun exposure, the few of the epidermal melanocytes they become they show excessive overgrowth and they uh, get deposited on the uh, skin or the oral mucosa and uh, they just show this characteristic appearance of the effulus or freckles. So here you see small tan or brown macule. Macule is nothing but a flat pale tan lesion which is less than 5 mm in diameter and the characteristic of effulus is that it occurs uh, the etiological factor is the ultraviolet rays exposure. Okay, the, the macules are again are seen only on the vermilion border of lips, especially the lower lip because lower lip is more commonly uh, prone to exposure, uh, prone to sun exposure and males are more commonly showing this effulus or freckles because they are the ones who are, uh, work outdoors for longer period of time and uh, show chronic prolonged ultraviolet ray exposure. And uh, this is, this is asymptomatic condition no specific treatment is required but cosmetic treatment will be required if uh, large of a um, lot of macules are seen dispersed on the sun exposed areas of face it may require cosmetic treatment so this is the appearance of uh, fleckles or effulus okay just you can see the flat pale tan macules which are just very very diffuse or dispersed over all of the sun exposed areas and uh, then we know uh, uh, nevocellular and blue nevi. We know oral nevi basically they just denote the benign proliferations of the epidermal melanocytes. And we have studied about the uh, nevi in detail in the benign neoplasms. Uh, we know that uh, uh, histologically the nevi appear to be of two types, the junctional nevi and the intramucosal nevi. Mostly what happens is the nevi it was associated with uh, that the nevi occur on the skin. It's not like that. Nevi also occur in the oral cavity. They are known as the intramucosal nevi. And uh, the, the di distinction histologically, the junctional and compound is based on the location of the melanocytes. If the nevi or uh, the proliferation of melanocytes, if they are just restricted to the junction of epithelium and basement membrane, they denote the uh, junctional nevi. If the proliferation of melanocytes, it just extends into the connective tissue, it is known as a compound nevus. Intramucosal nevi are nothing but appearance of nevi on the oral regions. Maybe on the gingiva, maybe on the buccal mucosa, maybe on the palatal region. Okay. The most commonest blue uh, nevus is the intramucosal nevus. Okay. The blue nevus is basically the intramucosal nevus and uh, it shows the proliferation or extension of epidermal melanocytes even into the connective tissue and uh, the nevi is just a uh, flat or pale tan macule sometimes it may be raised from the surface and it is most commonly seen the blue nevus is seen in the heart palate region okay to know uh, to differentiate the lesion from other uh, uh, malignant neoplasms or malignant melanoma you have to just uh, send the lesion for biopsy then you'll know that it is a benign uh, lesion that is a nevi and nevi has to be differentiated from mole also it's also known as mole intradermal nevus that is Okay, treatment is nothing but surgical excision. So, it is also a form of endogenous pigmentation. Neva is a form of endogenous pigmentation. Now, we'll see the physiologic pigmentation. Physiologic pigmentation is nothing but the pigmentation seen in individuals who are a little bit uh, darker skin color. So, the color, uh, uh, the darker skin individuals are more prone to develop the physiologic pigmentation. And uh, even in few of the races like the Caucasians or the uh, Mongolites or the Asians, they are more prone to uh, show this form of pigmentation. Uh, here, uh, there is nothing but the deposition of melanin is seen and the deposition of melanin it may range from uh, tan brown to dark, extreme dark uh, in nature in case of dark skin individuals. There is no apparent predilection for uh, occurrence of physiologic pigmentation. It may be just a form of a racial pigmentation and more, seen, more commonly seen in darker skin individuals. Okay, uh, macular lesions may be seen here and no specific treatment is required for this physiologic pigmentation. So that, that is also a form of endogenous pigmentation. The smoker's melanosis as the name itself indicates that smoking is the etiologic factor responsible for the deposition of pigments in the oral cavity. So uh, smoking for a, prolong, a prolonged period of time it leads to deposition of melanin in the attached gingiva. 
So attached gingiva is the one where the mel melanocytes get uh, just show excessive proliferation. Melanin gets deposited, and uh, the attached gingiva it appears a deep brown, brown to dark brown in color, deep brown to dark in color. And uh, most commonly, what happens is uh, when tobacco is the etiologic factor, whatever the coal or uh, tar products are there, they just uh, stimulate the melanocytes to deposit melanin and uh, that results in the hyperpigmentation and uh, the attached gingiva the pigmentation appears to be diffuse in nature it is just irregular and brown in color and uh, the intensity of pigmentation appears to be related to the time of exposure of smoking or uh, the chronic exposure is basically responsible for the smoker's melanosis okay and the duration is also important uh, when you see the microscopic picture of such a pigmented lesion of the oral cavity you see that basal cell layers show excessive proliferation of the melanocytes we know that epithelium has three four layers the basal layer the basal most layer shows excessive proliferation of melanocytes that is nothing but bacillar melanosis is seen so it's also a form of endogenous pigmentation then other endocrinopathic pigmentation we know a uh, few of the uh, syndromes like a uh, few of the systemic conditions like uh, decrease in secretion of adrenal cortex hormones what happens is whenever there is a decrease in secretion of adrenal cortex hormone uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone level is increased that leads to increased secretion of melanocyte stimulating hormone that leads to increased proliferation of melanocytes and ultimately melanin is deposited and uh, physiology uh, there is a disease called addison's disease uh, which is correlated with increased physiologic pigmentation of the skin and oral mucosa characteristically perioral pigmentation is uh, characteristic of this addison's disease okay Ad addison's disease is nothing but reduction in uh, secretion of adrenal cortex hormones okay so the accumulation of melanin granules is basically responsible for this characteristic uh, mel uh, me melanin uh, physiologic uh, pigmentation Okay, uh, so endocrine hormone uh, reduction in endocrine hormone uh, is also responsible for uh, deposition of melanin. And again, the melanin deposition is just diffuse in nature. Perioral whole of the um, uh, oral cavity uh, may show the pigmentation uh, either the gingiva or buccal mucosa. Even the perioral region shows the characteristic dark uh, pigmentation. Okay, here you can see in the picture is of a child affected with Addison's disease is a uh, Addison's disease child is showing the characteristic dark uh, brown pigmentation of the marginal gingiva whole of oral cavity is affected okay and uh, the treatment or diagnosis uh, to diagnose the pigmentation whenever you see a pigmentation to diagnose it as a you have to identify or relate with the specific cause of the pigmentation when you know the cause of the pigmentation only that you can treat the underlying pigmentation here if you administer steroid to the individual there will be relief of the symptoms okay so that uh, so that will help us in diagnosis there is a steroid administration to detect the uh, addison's disease will aid in the diagnosis of uh, i mean responsible what cause is responsible for causing the pigmentation so that can be made out uh, in case of Addison's disease. Then there is other uh, form, other syndrome associated with endogenous pigmentation. That is the Peetz Jagger syndrome. It's basically autosomal dominant inherited disorder. It's characterized by uh, association of intestinal hamartomatous polyps. Along with the polyps, there is characteristic pigmentation seen in the skin and even the oral mucous membrane. Anterior part of tongue and buccal mucosa. Clinically, it just appears as a uh, uh, restricted or well circumscribed melanotic brown macules which are about less than 0.5 cm in diameter. When you take a microscopic picture, you see that uh, the proliferation of melanocyte which was restricted to basal layers was not seen. Okay. Uh, the basal layers shows the characteristic bacillar melanosis but the melanocyte proliferation was not seen. So that's about the endogenous pigmentations. Now we'll see the uh, as I told you, the, uh, the, the distribution of pigmentation may be unique, it may be focal, it may be diffuse in nature. So what are the reasons of exogenous pigmentation and what comes under exogenous pigmentation will be studying now. Exogenous pigmentation basically is the pigmentation induced in the skin or oral mucosa because of any source and any other etiologic factor which is not present within the body. Okay, basically silver. 
silver was uh, earlier used in the treatments uh, treatment and the therapeutics part the lot of silver compounds were used silver uh, thiazine was used in case of burns and all and deposition of this silver leads to a condition known as agaidia agaidia is basically due to excessive consumption of uh, the silver or silver based compounds uh, and uh, occupational exposure to silver also may be responsible for this disease algaria argaria clinically it presents as deposition of silver in the gingiva in the marginal gingiva as a slate blue color line uh, which is seen more commonly along the gingival margins a thin blue slate, slate blue color line so uh, that is the diagnostic feature of uh, excessive exposure to silver compounds or excessive consumption of uh, silver compounds and along with that the deposition of uh, this uh, silver uh, compounds may also be seen in the sclera in the oral cavity or uh, hall of uh, gingiva buccal mucosa anyway you see you can see the pigmentation characteristically the appearance of sclera is characteristic of silver poisoning okay even the nails are uh, pigmented there is other form of uh, silver deposition which is occurring because of uh, uh, use of dental restorative materials that is amalgam tattoo okay so this uh, is the clinical picture of a uh, person affected with uh, the silver poisoning that is the argaria the sclera of the affected individuals are showing the characteristic slate blue uh, slate blue or dark uh, color okay so we now we'll see the I, as i told you the uh, the the dental restorative material which we use commonly that is the silver amalgam so whenever the deposition of such amalgam is occurring in the gingiva or in the buccal mucosa it leads to the focal form of um, pigmentation that is nothing but amalgam tattoo and uh, what is the etiology for uh, such pigmentation suppose uh, during restorative procedure when amalgam is condensed in the um, cavity is if suppose uh, few of the amalgam particles just get deposited in the marginal gingiva uh, that that leads to a form of a focal uh, pigmentation in that particular region or sometimes whenever you are removing the old restorative materials few of the uh, particles may just deposited in the gingival mucosa or the alveolar mucosa sometimes during extraction of uh, tooth if amalgam particles get deposited broken amalgam particles get deposited in the socket that also leads to a form of pigmentation clinically again they appear as a focal that is restricted pigmentation pigmentation restricted to that particular region only they appear as macules or they may be slightly raised and the color may range from black blue or gray okay they may be seen mostly on the gingival and the alveolar mucosa okay that's about the amalgam tattoo so it's a form of endogenous pigmentation because it's not produced by the body it's because of some foreign material being deposited then the mercurialism as i told you excessive or chronic exposure to mercury or mercury based compounds leads to a form of poisoning or asphalism okay it's an occupational hazard uh, basically what happens is whenever uh, mercury compounds are uh, deposited they just penetrate the erythrocyte membrane and they just bind to the hemoglobin leading to the characteristic change in the color and uh, in the oral cavity specifically the mercury uh, mercurial poisoning it appears as a diffuse gray pigmentation which is just seen as a linear band along the gingival margins and uh, even the alveolar mucosa shows the deposition of this uh, mercurial compounds the treatment for this is nothing but atropine and belladonna to just uh, 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 lessen the effects of mercurial poisoning you cannot uh, I mean, treat the disease the mercurial poisoning as such but you can just restrict the symptoms by using the atropine and you know lead is another substance uh, which uh, when individuals on uh, occupational exposure the person working in lead factories are more prone to develop this form of uh, poisoning there is a lead poisoning also known as plumbism uh, exposure uh, to lead may occur from either uh, exhaust or lead containing paints or ointments or batteries uh, when you see the characteristically the oral cavity what happens is lead poisoning it manifests as a gray black line along the gingival margins again it may be either in the marginal gingiva or in the attached gingiva a diffuse gray gray black line may be seen uh, lead uh, is deposited basically by uptake of uh, circulating erythrocytes they bind to the proteins present in the oral cavity and they just uh, show excessive proliferation of melanocytes and melanin is being deposited so that's about endogenous pigmentation another uh, uh, 
disturbance in oral cavity that is the hairy tongue actually it is a developmental anomaly here what happens is uh, filiform papillae are not desquamated then uh, the filiform papillae are enlarged and they just become a site for entrapment of all the debris and once the debris becomes entrapped bacterial and fungal growth occurs and that uh, chromogenic microorganisms are present in our oral cavity they just deposit on the filiform papillae and show the characteristic color of the tongue that is the tongue may range from black green pink or uh, blue in color so it is because of the uh, colonization of the chromogenic bacteria that the tongue appears to be of varied color and uh, uh, treatment for this is nothing but uh, this uh, this of papillae have to be carried out because uh, this hairy tongue is basically seen in debilitating individuals who are not uh, maintaining oral hygiene so uh, oral hygiene instructions have to be given and tongue scraping automatically it just reduces the filiform papillae and uh, the chromogenic bacteria are just dispersed so it relieves in the reduction of symptoms okay so that's about the uh, pigmentations of oral mucosa both the endogenous pigmentation exogenous pigmentation and uh, drug related pigmentations are also seen as all the as we have discussed the usage of bismuth is also associated uh, bismuth was used in uh, the, the the usage of bismuth it is also associated with development of a pigmentation uh, as a bismuth line uh, as with lead line it is uh, again seen on the marginal gingiva as a blue line in the um, alveolar, alveolar mucosa and uh, bismuth was earlier used for the treatment of congenital syphilis now it is not used but any drug related uh, therapy was also uh, responsible for the pigmentation which is seen in the oral cavity so we have seen the pigmentations of all of the oral cavity now we'll see the pigmentations or the discolorations which are seen on the teeth discolorations on teeth basically they appear as stains on the teeth we know stains on the teeth are, uh, are basically are uh, they are uh, reason for uh, the individual or the person seeking treatment because stains uh, uh, cause a major aesthetic problem to the individual okay uh, what are uh, dental stains pigmented deposits on the tooth surface are called the dental stains mostly they are extrinsic stains because they are uh, they are just located on the surface and uh, they are derived from any of the etiologic factors so that is about the extrinsic stains sometimes what happens is during uh, development of teeth few of the deposits occur in the teeth le leading to uh, strains which are intrinsic in nature these intrinsic strains may be because of either uh, porphyria which is a disease where the uh, pigment is being deposited uh, protein is being deposited in the teeth or erythroblastosis futalis it's uh, basically a hereditary disorder where you can see the deposition of uh, blood pigment on the teeth surface and uh, the tetracycline therapy here what happens is during uh, uh, the development embryologic development of the teeth if uh, suppose uh, during the intrauterine development if the mother is taking tetracycline then tetracycline cross crosses the placental barrier and it affects the developing teeth but okay so those are accounting for the uh, intrinsic strains so we'll see what are the extrinsic strains basically the oral cavity it is subjected to lot of uh, endogenous or exogenous substances which we take and the, those are responsible for causing the stains as we know already the oral microorganisms oral cavity has lot of microorganisms and oral microorganisms are chromogenic in nature so the endogenous substances uh, upon which the mi microorganisms are they become chromogenic and they just stain the teeth so we'll study what stains uh, what are the types of extrinsic stains see the stain occurring from smoking you know a lot of individuals uh, have this smoking habit and the stains from smoking they may uh, depend on the intensity and the duration of smoking uh, they may be from ranging from light brown in color to dark brown tarry deposit basically the smoke uh, is a form of tobacco like uh, coal tar is being deposited here and it's just deposited on the uh, surfaces of the teeth the buccal surface or the lingual surface uh, uh, more commonly on the surfaces of the teeth and uh, yellowish brown to black deposit forms because of the smoking habit and uh, this stain it acts as a nidus for the calculus okay so ultimately leading to development of calculus and uh, causing periodontal problems so the stains may be the reason the uh, individual seeks treatment the dental treatment because of stains and though these uh, strains are intrinsic in nature they can be removed very easily 
but they appear to be very hard and uh, dark brown in color because of the coal tar deposit okay so that's the stain from smoking and there is sometimes uh, you can see the brownish stain occurring in the surface of teeth uh, the brownish stain is basically the stain of pellicle we know pellicle uh, acquired pellicle is the structure which arises uh, which are, uh, occurs on the oral cavity immediately within uh, 30 minutes or one hour of brushing immediately after one hour of brushing a pellicle like structure is formed if that pellicle gets stained it gives a brown color staining okay and uh, it is basically the this brown stain is thought to be uh, a quiet form of pellicle and uh, this pellicle is uh, composed of salivary mucin this brown staining is more commonly seen in teeth which are uh, very closely situated to the salivary ductal orifices okay sometimes a pigmented dental plaque was observed uh, it was called by mesenteric line by the authors again it is nothing but a uh, uh, plaque which is showing the characteristic pigment that is the brown color pigment it, uh, it is seen on the gingival surfaces or the cervical surfaces of the teeth very close to the gingiva black stain sometimes occurs on the surface of teeth basically uh, these are uh, because of the chromogenic microorganisms acting and uh, they lead to deposition of the black pigment the black stain can be seen as a thin black deposit or a narrow line or band which is just seen in the cervi uh, cervical area of the teeth and the microorganisms uh, it is it is a site for deposition of calculus and the microorganisms act on it and further deepen the pigment by depositing the black color pigment okay the green stain uh, basically sometimes uh, in children mostly we see that the maxillary incisors or the maxillary anterior teeth they show the characteristic heavy gray green straining prominently in the gingival third area what happens is this is not because of the chromogenic microorganisms as such uh, if uh, the if you touch the uh, green color stain it will be very very soft but it won't be you can't remove it with the exploder so it was attributed that the green color staining whatever is seen it is because of uh, the remnants of nasmith's membrane so okay during the formation of uh, tooth whatever the remnants of nasmith's membrane are there they possibly show deposition of blood pigments in them giving the characteristic green color to the cervical areas of the teeth so that's why this green color staining is seen in case of children sometimes the orange color uh, stain is seen this is nothing but the deposition of uh, some foreign substance some food intake which uh, whatever we are taking if it is just deposited on the surface of teeth it, the teeth may have a brick red or orange color staining the stain can be removed easily it's just uh, for a food deposit we can say and uh, the more intrinsic the, mo the most important of the intrinsic staining is the tetracycline deposition we know tetracycline as a commonest antibiotic therapy used so uh, in, if tetracycline is instituted in uh, pregnant females uh, the developing infant intrauterine development of infant uh, uh, it shows characteristic effects on the developing tooth bud of the infant uh, the mostly the maxillary incisors the mandibular incisors of the deciduous teeth are affected if the tetracycline therapy is instituted about four months in utero to five months postpartum if the tetracycline is taken in, the, in between these period the tetracycline has a uh, property of crossing the placental barrier it just cross the placental barrier and gets deposited on the surfaces of teeth so that is a form of intrinsic straining uh, tetracycline actually it is uh, having the affinity for calcium complex okay uh, the calcium substances of teeth they have a affinity for the tetracycline they both form a com complex and thus they show they get deposited uh, teeth clinically affected with tetracycline deposition appear as a yellow or yellowish brown or a brownish gray discoloration okay the discoloration of palate or anterior uh, mucosa may also occurring as yellowish discoloration sometimes and uh, the teeth more if you see the surfaces of the teeth the incisal third of teeth are more commonly affected they appear to be gray in color and suppose if the roots are exposed they appear to be dark green in color and the teeth 
the teeth affected with tetracycline already have a characteristic yellow discoloration and, and suppose when they are seen under ultraviolet light, they, the teeth tend to show the characteristic property of fluorescence just accentuating the yellowish discoloration. Uh, whatever forms of tetracycline you take, either the minocycline, oxytetracycline, uh, any tetracycline form has effect on the developing uh, tooth bud. So that the tetracycline complex just gets deposited in the developing tooth bud and it shows uh, in the child. 